welcome to this new video uh, where I'm going to show uh, the last updates on my DIY remote control uh, uh, project. Uh, as you might see, I have quite advanced uh, in adding new elements to the surface and in particular the button set, which I will show you in a moment. And just to say that uh, the decision uh, I made is to keep on working uh, with the uh, STM32H723 and to stop the prototypation with uh, the SAMI70 because at the end of the day I decided that this uh, uh, H723 is too uh, nice uh, and complete uh, uh, and you know you will see the result is so good that it doesn't really make any sense to keep on working with the other platform. As usual, before to start, I would like to ask you to subscribe um, and to give a thumbs up to the video if you like it and to hit the bell to stay updates on the next chapter of my uh, uh, DIY project. Um, so, uh, as I was saying uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, I have added basically uh, uh, not all, but let's say almost all the push button uh, on the uh, Mackie Universal Control surface and protocol. Uh, so basically here you have what is called the assignment uh, button, which are fixed for any DAW. Here is the tray bar, which again is fixed for any uh, uh, DAW. Here you have a part of what is called a fader bank, which again is fixed. And here and here you have uh, instead the part that is uh, 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 that can change uh, depending on the layer that you apply uh, onto the uh, attach onto the uh, the surface and finally here you have the jog wheel and the the arrow buttons which again are fixed for any uh, DAW so let's start the demo first of all let's start uh, Cubase there you go Uh, a startup as you can see as usual you have the uh, uh, the left right pan which is the default function for the display you have three lights which switched on this is the light for the pan in fact which is the functionality the layer in which we are this is the light of the stop uh, because the project is actually stopped and this is the light of uh, uh, on and off of the motor that we will see in a moment because in fact motor are activated I choose as usual my uh, demo project and there you go uh, um, we have uh, two new lights that switched on here this is the loop button and this is the read function for the selected track which in this case is the number uh, one the project has been enriched uh, respect to the last time. I have added eight, eight uh, new uh, uh, audio tracks. This is because I want to demo the bank. Uh, and I have also added a, a instruments, eight instrument tracks here. This is because I want to demo the instrument functionality, which I think is, is, uh, is quite nice. Um, so going to the uh, fader banks and this is also because I, I received lots of questions from from people saying I need a 16 I need 24 I need 32 channel how does it works but there are many answers to this question but the the easier one is that the protocol the Mackie protocol uh, uh, works in groups by eight and in theory can manage any number of track you have in your project uh, as you can see here on the on the Cubase interface, it is selected the uh, first eight group, which is reflected into the uh, surface channel that you are seeing now. If you click here on the banks, uh, the surface reacts because we move to the second group, you see, of eight tracks. No matter how many tracks you have in your project, you can skip and move banks like this as you can see and you will always be able to use the interface to work on your tracks there is another interesting way of moving uh, this is the button of the shift at least in the Cubase configuration this can change depending on the DAW if I insert the shift 
The switch bank here works in a little bit different way. It still works in group by eight channels, but it moves, as you can see, by one. And there you go, you are in the second group. And then you move to the third group. And there you are, and back. This is the second group. And this is the, the first one. So, I mean, as you can see, you can really, it's very, really flexible and you shouldn't be afraid of having eight tracks uh, of control because you still have the possibility to move and to do uh, whatever you want to do. Um, another interesting feature that I added is the jog wheel that you see here. Jog wheel is a rotary encoder. As you can see, is used to move into the project. Of course, as usual, the interface reacts accordingly. And clicking on the button called Scrub, like this, uh, you can actually move listening the sound. As you can see, the, the meters are moving because it's reproduced forward or backward the sounds of the track, which is not reproduced if you unlock the scrap the scrub functionality. You see? The interface is reacting but the meters are not showing any activity. There you go. Another interesting function is these uh, buttons. These are the, the arrow button which are needed to move uh, into the project. So using down button I can as you can see select channels. When I again, when I move out from the uh, from the highlighted group of eight that you see here, you don't see anymore a selected track because the selected track is the nine. To see it, you need to move the bank, and there you go, the ninth track which is selected. Going back here, of course, I can move here like this. With this you can select and deselect the content of the track with the left and, uh, and, and, and right arrow. But there is another functionality of this four button arrow button which I like, which is uh, coupled with the zoom uh, button. If you click the zoom button, you can use the uh, arrows to in fact magnify, as you can see, vertically or reduce vertically or horizontally and reducing your project. Again, all of this is to control uh, uh, as much as possible all your workflow uh, from the uh, uh, surface. There you go. Again, we move to uh, in this area where there are the, uh, the, the uh, main uh, control functionalities, layers. We have already seen the EQ. Uh, as you can see, the display is uh, accordingly, is reacting accordingly. Um, but now, uh, with the shift, you can have another view, which is more complete. This one is with only one page, so whatever you see is what you what you have. So substantially, what you can do with this uh, interface using the 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 pots here, the virtual pot here, is to uh, again change the cut, the, sorry, the frequency and the cut here for the four band of the EQ. But if you click, if you click shift, you click EQ, EQ uh, uh, you have another v view in the display of the EQ function with two pages. And from here, you can really control it all. Because in the first page, again, you have uh, gain and frequency. Okay, so that is. If you go to the, this is the same as we saw before. But if you move into the second page, you have in fact the, the activation of the EQ that you do uh, from here. There you go. With this you enable it, enable it, enable it, enable it. These are the four bandwidths. And with this you can control the Q value, so the shape of the uh, of the EQ uh, slope. 
uh, something that you can do also in the other visualization the less complete one this one but it is a little bit more tricky um, and there you go there is still the possibility to use the flip functionality which i showed in another video that is this one which flips the control of the of what you are controlling in this moment from the v-pots to the uh, faders and so again as you can see i can move uh, the, the parameter that I want to move like this if you want to see what's happening into the uh, uh, Cubase uh, uh, screen uh, uh, you can still use you can still have this possibility using the edit button if you click it as you can see it appears the strip controller if you go to the equalization there you go you have the equalizer. I, re I remind we are selected the, the audio tree uh, 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 channel, which you can see also into the display audio 03. Uh, and again, here, that's a flip. You can control. There you go. You can control the bandwidth here, as you can see. And then as I said, moving here, you can control the Q. Let's do it on the second one, which I think is more visible. There you go. The Q parameter. Fourth bandwidth was not enabled. And there you go. And flipping, of course, you can do the same. In a very nice way, I like this thing. Another interesting functionality is the, the strip here. This is the strip of the channel tree. Sorry, let me uh, uh, unflip. Um, so basically, from here you can control uh, all the elements into the strip. You see, we have uh, as default the gate, which is the first element that you can activate into the strip. It's not yet activated. Let's activate it. There you go. I enable a noise gate. Now we say gates, which is active. Uh, uh, and I see the noise gate, which appear also into Cubase strip here. And what is interesting is that you, if you move to the second page, you have all the parameters that you can control again here through the pods. So this is the range. This is the attack, the release, the threshold and the queue here. And as you can see, everything moves here accordingly into the interface, and then back if you want to go, if you want to move on, because you can activate other things into the uh, strip. So you can move and say, for instance, that you want to activate a compressor. Again, you do the same. You choose what compressor you want. For instance, you want the tube compressor activated. You move to the second page here, you have all the parameter at once again. Output, attack, release, the drive, and finally the mix to mix the dry and the wet sound. Um, and you can basically do this with all the EQ we already did. You can, you can do it also from here if you want. And then you have, for instance, the limiter and the saturation okay i can activate the saturation we have magneto 2 and there you go same uh oh, sorry tape saturation sorry magneto 2 okay as you can see same as above you can move and you can control all the parameters of your there you go uh saturated there you go as you can see you can control the strip of the selected channel uh, completely from the surface uh, uh, I'm activating the uh, sh showing the editing window here but as you can understand you can do this you can take it out and you can uh, simply uh, uh, keep the tracks into the visualization of Cubase and do the whole work uh, uh, through uh, the, the interface and its display another interesting functionality which I like is here and is the instrument so let's move to the instrument there you go we are now into the instrument track I didn't 
I didn't do anything here, but it doesn't matter. This is a, a, a pet shop uh, uh, um, instrument. I click on instruments. You see the pet shop, pet shop instrument is already loaded. What is interesting here is that, as you can see, there are 22 pages of parameter that you can tweak with your interface. Sorry. Uh, so from the page here, you see you have all the parameters of your pet pet shop. Frankly speaking, I I don't know how much this is uh, uh, useful. 22 pages is a lot of stuff. Uh, and you really need to know every single parameter if you want to work on it. Let's um, move to the bank here. Let's go to the second. This I have not yet uh, enabled an instrument, so let's do it just to see the way it works. For instance, there is loop mesh here. Uh, uh, loop mesh have uh, eight page of configuration. Again, it's not really trivial. Uh, let's get back to this. We have flip. Uh, uh, there is a possibility to uh, deactivate motors. Okay, so as you can see, there you go. This is the second bank. This is the first bank. If I deactivate motor, what happening is that I'm still moving from one bank to the other. And if we visualize the Cubase. Uh, um, mixer, we can see that in fact nothing changed. I mean, everything is still working the very same way. And, and if I let the the uh, um, the track start, let the project start, I see that in the first block where I have registered with the first group where I have registered automation, I still see in the Cubase mixer things happening, but nothing is moving here because I have deactivated the motor. If I activate the motor, everything starts working. Just as, a, as an information, I didn't do anything, okay? This is, didn't develop anything, I mean, related to this. This is just the software activation and deactivation of the uh, feedback data coming from Cubase to my interface. So when I deactivate, what I'm doing is simply that saying Cubase to stop uh, to send uh, feedback data. And there you go. Um, other functionality which could be interesting are the one to move into the project in an easy and quick way. So for instance, this left and right goes at the beginning at the, and at the end of uh, markers that you have set in your project. Then you have this next which goes to the end of the project. Let me with this and previous goes to the to the beginning of the of the project um, there is also the possibility to uh, undo and redo change so if for instance I'm in the first I select the first track or let's say the eighth track which is easier uh, I, uh, it's armed as you can see for recording I start a recording and as you can see the the track is, is going to be overwritten in terms of the content of the audio content. Then I stop here. If I decide that I want to undo, I do this and the change has been undone. Again, uh, 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 everything through the interface, uh, through the surface, through the remote controller. Um, another interesting feature is related to the uh, read and write. When I start uh, uh, connecting buttons, I noticed that the read and write, which is here, was uh, an action only possible on a single track, which is the one selected. So in this case, uh, selected is the eight tracks. So, uh, and you can see that read is activated. I can deactivate the read. I can activate it. I can activate the write, but it's still only on the track which is selected. Then I discover that if you click on the shift, uh, in fact, you can do it massively on all the tracks, like this. And finally, there is the tray bar. The tray bar is uh, is uh, the stop, the play function, 
than the record, which I show in a, in a moment ago. There is the loop in the Cubase uh, interface. Actually, the loop is not really in the tray bar, which I don't like. I mean, it's in the tray bar inside the, uh, the uh, Cubase interface, as you can see here, but not into the uh, into the uh, surface controller. This is something that I don't uh, I don't like so much, but it's, the functionality is here. You have the possibility to move back and forth. This is very similar to what we can do. You can do with uh, with the jog wheel, but on a button base. And again, there is the possibility uh, uh, to set insert. These are the insert of a of a, a track. The one selected again, the eighth one. And as you can see, that uh, in the insert you can decide first of all what in which insert you want to work there are i think 16 insert in cubase yeah 16 there you go in the first insert i have already uh, set the metalizer which is a plugin uh it's an effect it has three pages of configuration as you can see but let's assume that i want to do another uh, i wanted to put another um, uh, effect and i go to the second insert and then I decide which effect I want to, to set so let's say that I want a ping pong delay ping pong delay there you go when you select it as usual it appears into the interface uh, and again moving to the page I have the possibility to set uh, all the parameters from the interface so as you can see and you can as you can see it is reflected here into Cubase also I think that that's pretty much all. Uh, I consider now the, also the functionality of the uh, uh, control uh, uh, on the layer of the on various layers of the of the backing control uh, protocol uh, substantially done. As you see here, the work of setting up all of this wasn't really trivial in the sense that there are many buttons and many. Uh, um, let's say uh, LEDs that uh, LEDs that you have to uh, uh, take care of. It's not trivial because it's not easy as I click a button and I I switch on and off a light actually uh, because in fact when you click the button what you are doing is sending a message to Cubase and then it's Cubase that is sending back a feedback that you use to switch on. And on, on and off light so you have to capture messages and then you have to do something with these messages like uh, activating the proper led substantially it's the same concept of the of the fader feedback but you know multiply it for every button and for every uh, led so it's not it's not super uh, easy and trivial but it's it works really very well and again a note on the h723 it's really charming it's really great uh, solid, uh, rock solid, super fast. I didn't add one single problem in terms of uh, or data loss uh, or whatever else. So really five stars for the moment to this microcontroller. That's all for this uh, video, which has been a bit longer than usual, but there was many things to, to show actually. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for listening and I see you. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.